In this episode, we're yanking out this boring four-cylinder automatic combo to make room for our V8. Let's go. In our last episode, we assembled the 5.3 with a bunch of fresh new parts and installed some modifications that will hopefully turn this tired old junkyard dog into a fierce, boosted beast. Now it's time to get the Tacoma ready for its new heart transplant by extracting that four-cylinder powertrain. Let's get to work. I waited a while to tear this truck apart because I'm enjoying using it too much. But I can't put it off any longer. The parts need to fly. Hey look everybody, Nana's back. Okay everybody, big day today, truck teardown day. You just saw me take the hood off and hook it up to the attic with Nana. Now it's time to really get to it. I wanna get all this done today so we can test fit that engine. Let's go. Hey everybody, I gotta interrupt this video for some important breaking news. The folks at Holly and I have partnered up to take Project Firebolt up to that next level. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the Holly Terminator X Max powertrain management system. It's plug and play control for almost any LS engine, starts at a thousand bucks. And the way I was going to go with Project Firebolt was junkyard ECU, uh, conversion harness, a variety of other little patches and workarounds, and I really wasn't happy with that solution. Holly came out with this while I was working on Firebolt and making the videos, which is why we had this breaking news here. And I'm just so thrilled that uh, this product came out. It's just perfect for what we're doing here. I'll show you this system in much more detail later on when we get to that point. So for now, this is just a little preview. Uh, some of you have been asking what I was gonna run for engine management, and this is it. For more info, check out holly.com. They've got tons of information and specs on this system. So there you go, a little sneak peek of the Terminator X Max that's going to be the brains behind Project Firebolt. I can't wait to get all this installed. Okay, back to the truck teardown video. I started off this job by filling up my work table with all the basic tools I'd need throughout the day. My LED work light, wrenches, pliers, my cordless 3 8 impact, tape and a Sharpie for labeling, lots of sockets and extensions in various sizes, and some penetrating oil for rusty bolts and spray silicone for stuck rubber hoses. Let's start by disconnecting and removing the battery. Now we can crawl under here and drain the coolant. While that was draining, I went all around the truck and sprayed penetrating oil on any hardware that we'll be wrenching on to make removal a breeze. My local recycle center accepts coolant, so I'll pour this in a jug and take it down there. Okay, now as I go here, I'm being really careful not to damage anything. Lots of little clips, lots of hoses and things. It's hard to tell what we'll reuse when it comes time to do the engine swap. For whatever we don't use, I think I'll be able to sell. So I want to keep it all in as good a condition as possible. As I'm removing parts, I like to keep assemblies like this together and connected. It makes it easier in case you need to reuse or repurpose them later on. I also like to cap off any lines to prevent them from leaking or venting fumes, and it keeps junk from getting in there too. Next, out comes the cruise control setup and the air intake assembly.
think we found out where the creatures were living. On the inside, I fished out the throttle cable that we can hopefully reuse. Now it's time to break down the front end. That parts pile is growing fast. It's amazing how much easier these clips are to remove when you remember that you have a tool like this. Okay, that all went well, but I gotta say that I was expecting to see a larger metal bumper under all that. I think Toyota pre-modified this to make room for my future intercooler. Thanks, guys. As I've been removing pieces and parts, I either keep the hardware with the part or put it in one of these hardware organizers. I like this kind with the removable bins that are different sizes. Some may call me a pack rat for keeping all sorts of little caps and lids and things like this over the years, but they really come in handy with situations like this. When you wanna plug these drippy transmission cooler lines that come out of the radiator. And to plug the lines from the transmission, I use some old Mitsubishi flywheel bolts. Yet another argument for just keeping everything. With all the lines and hoses removed from the radiator, we can unbolt it and the cooling fan set up and add it to our parts pile. You know, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at tearing this truck apart. That gives me an idea. Hey man, I might not be able to fix your Toyota, but I sure can take it apart. Okay, never mind. Bad idea. Next came the wiring harness, which put up a surprising fight. I feel like I really earned this one. There it is. The engine and transmission wiring harness. I feel like I've been in a war with it. This is what wrestling with that wiring harness did. Okay, so here's how the parts pile looks now. We've removed most everything from the engine bay and front end. Now it's time to remove a few things from the undercarriage that will allow us to pull this engine in trans. First up, the exhaust. If you saw the intro video I made about this truck, I shared with you its unique sound. I would describe it as dying cow. I think it sounded good many years ago, but time and the elements are cruel to cheap piping and crummy welds. You hear that? Here's a look at the exhaust setup. It starts out good up front and even has a nice Flowmaster muffler on here, but after that things go horribly wrong, starting in this region here. Oh, I see where that loud rattling sound was coming from, just the muffler resting on the floorboard here. Moving on, we have what looks like a Y-pipe that was custom fabricated by Sparky, the welding dog. You know I have just the tool to fix this. With that freed up, we can remove the stock front section. All right, let's send this rusty mess to the scrapyard. We need room for turbo V8 stuff under here. Oh, 
Up for sale is one barely used catback exhaust for your Toyota Tacoma. Low miles, excellent condition, make offer. With that out of my hair, now out comes the drive shaft. Now we have a pretty good look at the space we'll have for our new drivetrain and related parts. I can already tell that this steering rack placement and these front braces are going to make the swap interesting. Okay, back up to the top where we need to make a little mod to the rad support to facilitate all these engine swap shenanigans. Toyota lovers, please avert your eyes. You're not gonna like this. That went well. My plan is to make this a bolt-in piece that we can remove when needed. The last step before we remove the stock engine and transmission is to remove the engine and transmission mounting bolts. A little more room for the engine hoist here up front would be nice, so let's give the toolbox a temporary relocation. All right, let's hook it up and pull it all out. That all went according to plan, so now I'm going to use a moving dolly that I modified a bit to temporarily store this setup while keeping it mobile. As you can see here, I actually ended up using a large dolly in the front and a small one under the transmission in the rear. The stock engine and transmission is out. So there it is, one gently used 2.4 four-cylinder and four-speed automatic that'll hopefully find its way into someone's needy Toyota truck soon. As for the Tacoma, now we're getting somewhere. This empty engine bay is just begging for its first test fit of our refreshed 5.3 GM V8. The next day, by some miracle of nature, the endless, ice-cold, rainy weather we've had subsided and we were given a beautiful, mild day here in East Tennessee. I knew this weather wouldn't last, so I took this opportunity to do a much-needed engine bay cleanup. If you've watched my videos in the past, you already know how I feel about scrub bubs. This stuff works wonders on dirty engine bays and is great for most interior cleanup jobs too. I started this job by wrapping up any electrical connections to keep them safe from water, especially this giant stock engine harness, which I plan to remove and dissect but haven't got around to doing yet. The scrub bubs are super easy to work with, you just spray them on, let them do their thing and rinse them off. I made sure to hit the dirtier areas with a soft brush because I found that these tiny living bubble creatures with brushes for feet need a little help sometimes. That looks way better. After letting this all dry in the sun, I unwrapped all the electrical stuff and pushed this engineless Tacoma back in the garage. Thank you for watching and thank you to Summit Racing for making this video series possible. 
No matter what you're building, be sure to visit summitracing.com or download their handy app for all of your horsepower needs. Also, don't forget to come hang out with me on any of these spots. I'd love to hear from you over there. In the next episode, it's time to fill this empty engine bay with our V8 to see what fits and what's going to need the sledgehammer treatment. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.